Well, hello there. How's it going guys, Runner Runner Poker, and today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We've been doing a lot of outside activity, and you know, my motto is keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy, but a big part of keeping your body healthy is a good, balanced diet. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna make some food. Now I gotta admit, the meal for today is not going to be the healthiest thing, but it definitely still beats frozen pizza. Plus we're making it for a big crowd, including Olympic swimmer Kieran Smith, who will be joining us tonight uh, for dinner, which is really, really, really cool. So I'm going to do the usual hand breakdown while doing the activity of choice. So let me put you up to a place so you can see me cooking. Ah, there we go. That's a little bit better of an angle. So tonight's menu is going to consist of a kind of a mixed recipe between a chicken alfredo and a baked lasagna. We're gonna kind of just see what happens. Also, remember, stay hydrated. Very important. Without further ado, I present to you Vlog 29, Cooking and Poker. First hand we get into here, we call a raise to $20 with none other than Jack 10 suited. That's right, that boy. Button and the small blind come along for the ride as well. So with $80 in the middle, Jack 10 of spades in hand. Ah, there it is. We get a flop of ace, ace, deuce, one spade. Not the greatest flop, pretty uninteresting. Uh, we check and the action checks all the way around. Interesting. The turn interests us a little bit more as it's the four of spades. We pick up the flush draw, the PFR kicks up where they left off and bets 30. We call with the flush draw before the button raises to 75. Hmm. Pretty odd small raise size. Not really sure what to think about it. Uh, and that's what the preflop raiser thought, because they call. Uh, I call too, closing the action. Now, I know in this spot I've got a pretty easily dominated flush draw uh, on a paired board, no less, but it's a good price, and there aren't like a ton of full houses that make sense, so. If we do make our flush, there's a good chance that we can get a lot of value against a dry ace that has trips, so I think it's a decent decision. None of that really all actually mattered though, because the river bricks out pretty hard. It's actually the four of clubs double pairing the board, so our decision is going to be pretty easy. We check to the button who bets 250. That's a lot bigger than their <laughs> bet before, so uh, the PFR actually calls, which is interesting and uh, we have a pretty easy fold, so we let it go, and we actually get to see, I, I cut the footage uh, a little too early, so we didn't get to see what the PFR had, um, but we got to see what the button had, and they somehow show ace-king for not three-betting preflop. We're gonna reference this player as seat three because we get into a lot of pots against them, and they're a really crazy player, super unpredictable, and they're one of the players that, if they have a hand they like, they're gonna play it no matter what the price is, which is the type of player you want at your table. We're gonna to try to take advantage of the situation that we find ourselves in. Looking down at ace-queen offsuit under the gun. There's a button straddle and both the blinds have limped in. Now, players like C3 don't come around too often, so I'm gonna to try to make the most of it. I take the advantage here of just raising really large to $100. Unsurprisingly, C3 calls and the rest of the field folds, so Heads up, out of position with 230 in the middle against, I really don't even know what we're up against, to a pretty safe board, it comes 664. Pretty safe board for us, so I attempt to bet $130, and C3 instantly shows us ace-10 of clubs and folds. It's gonna be one of those days. We're gonna go for double or nothing. This time we've got ace-king offsuit in the cutoff. It's limp to me, and honestly, I feel like the open size is pretty arbitrary to isolate C3, so I picked $75. Let's see what works. C3 does make the call, and the rest of the field folds. So with $170 in the middle, we're going heads up against C3 to a board that's not nearly as kind to us this time. It's 578. Against an opponent like this, on a board like this, where this is just going to favor their range a lot more, we should probably be doing more checking and giving up since we can just play bigger pots with our value hands and just kind of get rid of these. I think we just have to bluff less frequently to be profitable. So that's what we should do. Unfortunately, I decided to get a little sticky just to see if he's got something. And I bet a hundred, which I don't like at all. Unsurprisingly, they make the call. Turn card incoming and 
It's a 10. Now, at the time, I thought this was a worse card than it really was, and that's kind of a common theme across my channel, I'm not gonna lie. I decided to check, and almost instantly, they bet $100. I don't really know what to make of that, but we're sitting with Ace High against a player who almost has an uncapped range, and, I mean, just, they could have anything on this board, so I just kind of fold. Interestingly, though, our opponent shows us the Queen of Diamonds. Very interesting card for them to have here. They said that they had Ace-Queen, and they were just betting because I checked, but... I really want to hope it was Queens. I don't know. What do you guys think? This. This is the time to get it back. That's right. We've got Pocket Kings, the Cowboys, in the big blinds, ready to go. It limps to us. We make it $80 to go to isolate C3. They call, but our isolation was actually unsuccessful, as the small blind wants to come along for the ride too. So. With $250 in the middle, multi-way, second to go, we get a very dynamic board of Jack, 10, Ace. There's always an Ace on the board when you've got pocket kings. Small blind checks, I exercise some pot control and check myself, and C3 checks. So, free turn card incoming, and it's, it's the nine of clubs. Small blind checks, and now we've got the nut flush draw, a gutter, and a pair, time to go for the pot, we bet 150. Luckily, both players fold, and the pot's pushed toward us without really getting tangled in something sticky. Getting into the mix with some more interesting hands, we look down at 4-5 of hearts in the hijack, facing an early position raise to 20. Now, this is definitely on the looser side, but content was calling. We make the call. We end up going four ways to this flop to not half bad of a board. That comes king 9-8 with two hearts. We've got our flush drop. PFR checks, and it checks all the way to seat 3, who bets 30. Both the opponents before me make the call. Honestly, this should probably just be a fold because of reverse implied odds for someone probably having a higher heart flush draw, but I get a little bit stubborn. Make the call anyway. Turn card incoming, and it's a 6. Now, at least we've got a gutter to the bottom end along with our flush draw. Table checks to seat 3, who also checks this time. Unfortunately, we don't make a straight or a flush on the river, but we make a pair. Again, the entire table checks, and C8 manages to somehow turn over pocket queens for the winner. You can see my hand in the table footage portraying a very visible look of confusion, knowing that I very likely could have bluffed our opponents off of this hand had I picked up the aggression earlier. I don't know. What do you guys think? What line would you take in this spot? Okay, we're gonna cover this hand real quick while I'm waiting for the water to boil for the pasta. Very exciting hand. We've got ace-queen offsuit. Facing a button straddle and two limbs. Sticking to the game plan once again, I make it 75 to go to try to isolate C3. Now, this does not go according to plan. C3 actually folds, and then the button straddler pushes for about 160 total. Folds back around to the second limper, who also sticks the rest of their money in. Now. It's definitely not much more for me to call, and we've got a good hand, so I toss in the chips, and we're going to go three ways to a full runout. This button straddler actually shows a single five, which either leads me to believe it's ace five or pocket five, so we're flipping at the absolute worst, and then the limper doesn't choose to show until it's over. But we get a fantastic runout of ace, king, deuce, jack, eight. So... We show our hand with top pair, top kicker, the button straddler, Mux, because, you know, there's no hand with a five that they could beat us with. And then the limper, very reluctantly, you can't really see it in the video, but they turn over pocket tens for flipping against them as well. So, feels good to win this all in, and we're back up just a little bit over where we started on the day. Water is just about at a boil. We've got some... Rotini pasta for the base. This says on the box here that we're gonna need to boil it for seven minutes. That's not what we're gonna do. If you're gonna bake pasta, you kind of pre-boil it for about half the time before it goes in the oven. So we're gonna take a break. We've only got one more hand to cover, but before we do that, I'm gonna kind of do the more labor-intensive part so that I can, you know, not split my attention. I'm gonna boil the pasta. I'm gonna sear the chicken. I'm gonna put the broccoli in the microwave. For only a, a minute, we're pre-steaming the broccoli in the microwave so that we can put it back into the oven, similar to how we're going to do the pasta. 
Uh, and then after all of that is in the oven and we're letting that melt for a little bit, I'll go over the last ham. Stay tuned, be patient, watch the montage. I get this pan nice and hot. Remember, no color, no flavor. Some of this. Y'all don't know what this is. This is called magic dust. You're not allowed to know the recipe, but it's really good. If you don't have a strainer, this is about what you can do. No steam burns, no steam burns. Please, no steam burns. Okay, doing good. Okay, that was pretty successful. Not gonna lie. In with the chicken. Very good. Now, Alfredo sauce. That, that burner was still very hot. Okay, so now, now what we're gonna do, now here's the important part, okay? Gotta make it look healthy. How do we do that? Grab our broccoli, that's right. We're gonna take our broccoli we're going to just insert the broccoli into the cheese, just like this. There we go. Okay, now, this in the oven for however long you think it needs. So, I said dinner was going to be at 6.30, it's 6.25, and that needs at least 10 minutes. So. Expert planning and timing and all that. <laughs> for the moment you've all been waiting for, the final hand we're going to review, the last hand I managed to capture on video, we've got the Jack Blacks in the big blind facing a button straddle and a limp. 70 feels like the magic number. I don't know. Like I said, arbitrary open sizes. Seat 3 makes a call as well as the cutoff who wants some action. So, three ways out of position with 230 in the middle, we get very dry board of King Four Deuce. We check, and C3 instantly bets $150, which convinces the cutoff to fold. Now, they say that good stories come full circle, and this is no exception. If you rewind the tape all the way back to the first hand, you'll remember that C3 chose not to three bet Ace King preflop. If we know that that hand is in their range here, I think we could kind of just exploitatively fold. Knowing that History repeats itself. We make the fold. Huh? I show you guys all the time. This is not bluff, my friend. This is not bluff. Yeah, nothing. That's not bluff here. Sometimes I flop. But that's not quite where the story ends. At this exact moment, we were about even, but then the one dealer in the room who isn't comfortable with me filming gets rotated in, so I couldn't get any more hands. There was one more hand, though, in that set that I didn't get to record, and I'm really upset. I didn't manage to catch it on film because I would have really liked to show it to an NFL agent, as it was a massive pun. Ended up finishing down about 600 on the night after being even on the recorded hands. I guess some days are just like that. I nailed this. Oh, this is so good. I just had a bite of this, and this is so good. Like, really good. Okay, people, come eat. Here are plates. Thank you. Please buy my lunch box. You have the plate chicken coming out. Yeah, you put it on. <gasps> For real? <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> 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 oh, you got it? That's so My oh, God. Wow. That is so nice. Nice. Beautiful. The boy. This is the one and only in the flesh Olympic swimmer, Kieran Smith. He's a super great dude, one of the most humble guys I've ever met, and although he's not a big poker guy, he's still a big supporter of the success of the channel in general. Stoked he can make it to the house party tonight, and even help me make the thumbnail. We bought it on eBay. So if not for me, hit the like button for him, so that he can keep winning medals in the future. Cheers to Olympians. Wait, the man. I know, I was saying it's In the flesh. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking COVID really seriously. Wow. Yeah, it was really up to you.